examples. I'd like to then welcome Mr. Michael. Um, Mr. Michael, what, what, how would I pronounce your last name? Yeah, Geller. Geller, Geller is a, Geller. a Swiss name, so I'm, I'm from Switzerland. Yeah, so you can you can hear it from my accent. So it's uh, something that I have all time in my DNA. So everybody knows I'm from Switzerland. Or fantastic. Most people say from Germany, German part, something somewhere there. Okay. Oh, wow, a real Swiss hotelier. This is quite a um, quite a pleasure. Then, so uh, Mr. Michael Geller comes to us uh, as a general manager of Six Senses in Iluwatu, which is a luxury resort. Um, it's also in our area. So, uh, so we're, we're, we're sort of going through Startup Masterclass and, and examining the, the talent that we find here in Bali. So um, basically today, um, as part of our Masterclass, we'll be asking Mr. Michael some questions about his perspectives of being a general manager at a resort and his incredible history. Um, I've seen that you've worked in Taipei, in Thailand, and also most recently in Bali. And uh, the, the purpose of this is to sort of inspire uh, delight with hospitality students, with people who are curious about what it takes to become a general manager and, and hopefully motivate them to, um, to, to uh, build careers in the hospitality industry. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'll let Mr. Michael uh, introduce himself and tell us a little bit about his background. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Okay, sure, 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 sure. So yeah, um, First of all, thank you very much uh, to invite me uh, here to this session. I'm uh, absolutely honored and uh, excited to, to talk to you, Jing, and also to your students. And uh, perhaps I can exchange a little bit my experience and uh, my, my past and also what I'm doing in Six Senses to uh, give a little bit of input uh, how beautiful it is to, to work for the hospitality. So I, I started around 100 years ago and study chefs in Switzerland. So that was my start. <laughs> <laughs> They're not 100 years ago, but <laughs> quite, uh, quite a bit back. <laughs> okay. So uh, I studied as chef and I uh, uh, really love to eat, uh, I love wine. Uh, that was always something that I'm very close to connected. And I, I, I was working then five years in the kitchen, in different kitchens in Switzerland, and learned about uh, the Michelin star restaurant uh, to, uh, to cook there. And decided then to, uh, to make the hotel management school in Switzerland, uh, what is uh, quite famous uh, in Zurich. There's three different uh, management, hotel management schools are very famous, Lucerne, um, then uh, in uh, Geneva is a very famous one, uh, the Eco Lausanne, uh, and also in Zurich. So I, I decided to go for, for Zurich uh, after two years and had had a chance then uh, to start all over again. You know, after you have already a, a profession, you learn uh, hospitality, and then you start again by the bottom. So I had to start by the purchasing, mm -hmm. purchasing manager, assistant manager, then s and manager, resort manager. And after 10 years, after 10 years at the hotel management school, I had my first position of GM. And that uh, was a very excited, uh, exciting property, a really shut up uh, member in uh, the French part of Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, uh, not very, not many, many rooms, well, 35 rooms and that was a luxury uh, place uh, with a beautiful garden and a beautiful F&B outlet that I could manage for three years mm -hmm. and moved then to Italy the first time to open a hotel in Tuscany and uh, there I get the really the flavor that I would like to learn more about uh, the whole world it's not only Switzerland it's of course it's very nice and well organized and expensive but <laughs> I could see there is much more outdoor and I was really motivated to go out and uh, after I came back from Tuscany, after this assignment from uh, two years, I moved to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big step. Uh, that was the first time in Asia in 2005. And since in 2005, I'm in, in Asia for uh, half of the time in Taiwan, like you mentioned already. Mm -hmm. I was with the uh, region hotels uh, uh, together for seven years mm -hmm. and uh, decided then uh, go to uh, Six Senses where I am today and uh, managing the, the Six Senses in Uluwatu, mm -hmm. but it's uh, also a part now from ISG, then uh, Six Senses was bought from ISG, from Intercontinental, yep. so it's a part of the luxury uh, portfolio, the region, uh, I, uh, Six Senses, and Kimpton is are the luxury brand what uh, in ISG has today. Correct, correct. Okay, wow. That's that's an amazing career, and I, I think that's, that's taken you to across um, so many different countries and different 
um, different positions too. If you look back, I'm very curious, Michael. Let's let's say there there's probably like you know hundreds of thousands of people who start in the hospitality industry, but there's there's so few who actually become like a general manager. Um, in your experience, yeah. what, what sort of is that quality? Because when I look at a lot of general managers, I'm, I'm, it, it, for me, it often looks like like the closest comparison is is it's almost like the military where you don't necessarily need to have, let's say, more and more and more degrees. It, it's 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 almost like the experience that you've put together and the mm. the achievements that you've had um, actually sort of get you promoted up to up to being a general manager. But that, that, that's my perspective. But from your yeah. perspective, what would you say is like the most crucial element to to see that career progression across mm. time? I think so. Uh, in, in, like I mentioned before, I had the, in a hotel management school, you, you get all the tools, mm -hmm. all the tools what you will work with in future, but you don't have the experience with them. And you need to learn to work with all the tools after the hotel management school and learn and get the experience how to to work with it. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like uh, you 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 are a doctor and you know exactly how the operation goes, but you never have it done. So you need to really do to find out you know where is now the cut to do now that it is not too deep and, and it's not too dangerous so that you can make it uh, a progress from it. So it's something what uh, I really need time to learn. I think so it's. it's a very good part if you have experience in a hospitality in a hotel before mm -hmm. uh, that you can see different departments if it's housekeeping finance uh, self marketing f and b well you get the uh, first experience uh, from the different departments and you learn from all departments and later when you are gm this department head will ask you for advice and you have to tell them what you think from your experience is the right decision to do Mm -hmm. And this you can do only if not you read a book, but if you have it done by yourself. If you have washed plates behind, if you have done a bed in the, in the housekeeping, if you have served food to our guests, then you get the experience what it needs uh, that you can give the right direction as as general manager. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so in 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 a way, a general manager is is like a coach. Um, you're you're sort of dispensing this yeah. wisdom out to. The people that that are following you, uh, curious, like on on the perspective of becoming the general manager, like like uh, I see a lot of people they have they have very interesting trajectories to become general managers. You said starting food and beverage, and you should sort of work your way through different management positions. But like to become a general manager, do you, did you ever see that is how important is like to be mentored by an existing general manager, and and how does how does is there any any component where that comes into play, or is it more, you know, you have enough experience, you have that expertise, and now now you're ready to sort of drive the entire entire um, <laughs> ship on your own? Um, how how would you sort of uh, explain the the learning process of becoming a general manager? Mm. I, I think so that the part what. Well, you, you have a very important part. What was in my past very important, mm -hmm. the mentor, what you had, you know. Uh, I was uh, working eight years in uh, the south part of Switzerland, in Ascona, what is the Italian part, we speak mm -hmm. Italian, um, in a five-star hotel. And I was planning to be there for three years. So I was there, the purchasing manager directly after the hotel management school. And after three years, I was uh, ready to resign, to go to another hotel, learn more from another, the other department, and go ahead. However, my boss uh, don't let me go. He say, uh, Michael, you're not done here. I have another job. You have to go now in f and I say, I don't have any f and experience. I'm a chef, you know, I was never in front of the guest. He said, that's why you have to do it. <laughs> that's why I have to do it. So he put me in the, in the cold water. I jumped in. Of course, I know many things, you know, I had the tools, you know, but you had to do it the first time. And he put me for in, in, in and he observed me and he helped me, he guided me, you know, he was yeah. always around me and helped me to, to say, listen, the, oh, these are the guests, but you have to be very careful. You have to look for this and this and this. So he guided me in the right direction that I had fun by the work, you know, yeah. I was scared in the start, but and I, 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 I developed so much fun and I make such a good job that he say, 
after three years when I was like to go ahead again and, and resign, he said, no, 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 no. Now you are my resort manager. And then he put me <laughs> on the resort manager position and I had to learn about finance. <laughs> so he, uh, Hans Loy, he was the name. Uh, he put me always in very difficult situation. And exactly there, uh, there I learned the most. There I learned the most. And I had really, to survive, you had to learn everything. And you work and you're motivated and you kneel in your work. And that's something what uh, I think so everybody should have a mentor around that. And I do, that, I do it with, with my team also. I push them on the limits to do things what they have not done before. Right. But I learn from my mentor. I bring in my leadership also in. I think so it's extremely important uh, to learn from your person what is, what is very close and is, is also a part of your, of your past uh, career experience. And there is a, another part what what I learned a lot from him is what is important between um, the GM and the employee, mm -hmm. how you handle this relation that you are not only a boss, mm -hmm. that you should be a leader and, and a, a, a sample, a good sample, what, what shows how you should do it. Mm -hmm. And also how you communicate with guests, you know, how you entertain guests. And, mm -hmm. and there I, I take so much with me after three, now two years uh, as resort manager, he told me, Michael, now I have a job for GM for you, but not here. I, I, I stay, <laughs> uh, but you need to leave. So after uh, eight years in, in this hotel, he sent me to as uh, my first position as GM uh, in, in this hotel in this uh, Le Vieux Manoir in Wurten. So that was my, that was my mentor what helped me really to learn and put so much experience in my package that I can move out and start to be a manager. We're 35 uh, years old, when I was 35. Wow, okay, that's that's actually a very inspirational story because um, Andre uh, is, is also learning, and, and we're all learning how to be better mentors. And it's actually pretty fascinating to see what that looks like when it's successful. Like, you know, years later, the, the people, um, you know, kind of like you've trained, They've, they've developed their careers and that that relationship sounds actually that relationship kind of brings me to to I guess the the bridge question which is around you have now as a general manager you have all these expectations that you have to fulfill right and I would imagine they're coming from three directions you know you have the owner of the hotel and perhaps a management company if they're different um, you know so that's coming like us from the top and operation yeah and operations and then you have you have expectations <laughs> The, the employees that surround you and you have expectations of your guests. And so it, I'm, I'm wondering, um, there is a part of the reality that we fix, but there's, in hospitality, I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done in managing expectations. And I'm just curious to explore sort of how you see these different parties and, and what what is the skill or the development that, let's say a beginner would not understand but, but somebody that has mm. has been through this would understand about managing expectations from these different groups. Mm. <clears throat> Absolutely uh, right and a good question. I think that it's, it's very important as GM. When I had my first experience as GM, I was jumping in some of the GM position without to look around what kind of environment I will work also. So that was very challenging. Uh, today, I'm much more careful to understand exactly the three parties you mentioned, the management company, the, the owner, mm -hmm. and also the operation. So that's uh, the operation mostly is, is, is the easiest part to, for me now, it's the easiest part to handle. Uh, the more difficult part is owner, what you don't know, Mm -hmm. And the management company will work perhaps only the first time with them together. Right. So uh, when I was when I was uh, approached by Six Senses, I was had I don't know around ten interviews. <laughs> oh wow! And they make very sure that I am the right person, and I could feel that what they are doing is so right that I would like to be a part of it. I see. And it's something what it's not only to be the GM of a Six Senses. It, it's much more. It's but the whole philosophy of the company, it goes so deep mm -hmm. that I could connect immediately. Uh, I worked for Rich and I worked for JD, GHM Hotels. They are all great, great, great hospitality groups, but I never connect to a hotel group like Six Sense so quick. Okay. Then everything what we are doing have to do with sustainability, wellness, 
and uh, with experience for the guests. So these three pillars have to be always fulfilled in everything you are doing. I see. You cannot do something what is not on the these three pillars. So I could connect to the management company very easily. The owner I know already from my past as region. He's also the owner of the region in Jakarta. So I was there working with him. Mm -hmm. And the only part I don't know is the employee. But I connect very quickly. And like you know, I was the second time I opened the region in Tanur, which is a fair month, mm -hmm. uh, seven years ago. And I came back to Bali and uh, it was very easy to connect again. And uh, my friends are still here. So um, it was like a coming home. Okay. Okay, that's 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 fascinating. You did did you just say that uh, if I heard you correctly, Michael, you said that you were involved in the opening of the Fairmont in Sonora. Yes, before the Fairmont was a region, region a hotel and resort. Okay, and uh, that was re was deflagged uh, after I think uh, one year. That was not anymore there. Mm -hmm. I was there to replace the GM before opening and operating the hotel, finishing the hotel with the construction for eight months, and then I go back to Taipei in the head office. That's that's actually kind of a good segue to to this this idea of um, just earlier you mentioned, Michael, that you are uh, the, the operations part is the easiest part now. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious in your experience what you've seen in terms of you you've operated operations in many different countries now in Italy in Taiwan in Thailand and now in Indonesia and in terms of in terms of translating your vision and your message into let's say an operational um, you know uh, in, into operational services into into results do you see any sort of what, what sort of adaptations do you need to go through what sort of what sort of like like how are you how are you balancing uh, what needs to be done when you're moving your experience from one context to another context and in terms of what, what do you need to relearn and what can you what can you rely on as like a core portable um, principle that you can bring from place to place? Yeah, uh, if, it, if it would be a master a master where we can follow from A to, to, to Z it would be fantastic. <laughs> Unfortunately, every property has different kind of you know colorful uh, working environment so some need very strong focus on ownership very strong of management company or very strong focus on my, on the operation mm -hmm. every prop i could not compare one property to each other mm -hmm. uh, i know if it's if it's the operation it's, it's for me very easy but sometimes owner are very difficult to see through what is the bigger picture from them. You know, is, there, is this only an investment and they will then sell later or they are really connected, emotional and connected to the, to the property and very strongly involved. So there are so many kind of different pattern and shadows, but you really need to learn more. The first three months you only observe and see what's going on in your property and then you understand it and then you can put your finger on it and really start moving on. So um, that, uh, in the start, when I was the first time GM, after a month, I already thought I have to do everything and change everything. So that's uh, that's the first mistakes we all GM are doing, and I think so. It's very important to understand with what kind of culture you are working. Like you say, mm -hmm. ties are different than if you work in uh, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan is different than you work in in Indonesia. The culture where you are, you need to embrace, understand, and then you can understand also the behavior of your employees. That's absolutely extreme and important. Okay, that's that's actually very fascinating. And and if I if were to drill down a little bit further, are there any particular stories that you remember about? I mean, actually, maybe to get to the story, is there anything that you particularly admire or or miss about previous uh, or, or or your own company? I see that you're now uh, you admired their sense of culture, their sense of sustainability, wellness, and they have a it seems like they have a mission-driven purpose, right? Um, have you seen mm -hmm. like 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 what are sort of like pros and cons in the different sizes of organizations that you've worked in, and maybe also the different geographies that you've worked in? Have you noticed like oh, you know, to get this done in this particular size organization, this particular country, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder. Like, do you have any like? Uh, I'm just trying to kind of paint some context around these these stories. Mm. <clears throat> I think so. What, what, what's quite interesting, um, 
uh, Six Senses well, is already 20 years old oh, wow. and has uh, done uh, an immense shop. And there was uh, always one of the top uh, management company for sustainability and wellness. <laughs> now, Six Senses got bought from ISG. And very often, if a big company by a small luxury company, many things change. You know, the, the big company, they start to change the structure, uh, the philosophy, they, they put their hands on it, and that can change the brand very strongly. So luckily, I actually don't touch Six Senses so far. Okay. So we get a little bit help in self-marketing, and we get a bit help in reservation. Of course, they have a big database, so it really makes sense. Mm -hmm. All other structure is still the same. So we are still living exactly the same DNA like before we get bought. Mm. And that's, that's something that is extremely important that a luxury, a luxury resort company or management company works totally different than a five-star hotel. A five-star hotel works totally different than a luxury part. And particularly now what we are going through this difficult time from COVID, yeah. we, are, we can really see how the guest experience change and really start now to have totally different view on luxury. What is the luxury from future? It's not a golden handle or something <laughs> what is very shiny. No, it's something what take care about the environment. And that's the point from Six Sense. We are so in time now, the demand of Six Sense is so big. We have hundred properties in pipeline, 100. In the moment, we have only 18 property in operation but 100 in a pipeline. So it's a huge demand. Everybody would like to have a six senses now. So yeah. it's really changed a little bit the luxury experience from very shiny and gold and, and, and sparkling to a, a normal environment, how to consume an experience mm. in a hotel what is much more human and much more environment friendly. So it's, it's something what, um, I think the guests go back a little bit, uh, take a step back and see where we are and embrace again um, what what we have uh, for beautiful uh, location uh, and can have a good experience there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I, have I think it's, it's something. Yeah, sorry. Uh, please. Uh, are you go ahead. <laughs> I, can still, I can talk for two hours. <laughs> Uh, I would definitely, I, I've definitely seen this trend happen just right here in Uluwatu, actually, from, from, oh, wow, I, I forgot what year it happened, but I remember the largest developments to come into this area were first, uh, the first one is probably Ritz-Carlton, which uh, is just down the road, right? Yep. Um, and then that became Ayana. But then the one following that I remember was the Bulgari. And so when Bulgari came in, they came Bulgari, in. Bulgari, yeah, very, the first one, yeah. Yeah, they came in very, like, uh, it was it was interesting. It was like it was ostentatious Balinese, right? So they took kind of like the Balinese village and they they super glamorized it and and put in um, like the gold handles and such. But then the next evolution I remember coming to this area was uh, it was actually Ailila, and Ailila yeah. from a completely different. And when I first saw it, I I completely thought that this is bizarre and this doesn't belong here. Uh, it's it like a modern art gallery right here in the middle of the bouquet, so it's like rectangular. And and I and I thought actually that that Bulgari was actually a little bit more authentic, and it belonged in Bali. But then I realized mm -hmm. something. I realized that the I realized that the people who had made Ailila had actually a pretty had I I thought it was a higher principle. So after walking through the resort a few times, eventually it dawned on me that. This resort is a little bit actually really it's it's a picture frame. It's actually just a frame. Mm -hmm. So when you walk through it, you see all the corridors make you focus outside of the resort. They focus on the ocean view, they focus back on a particular angle of the hillside, they focus on like a tree. They the the resort just provides if you look at it, it just provides a frame around all these different views and then I thought Oh, I get it, right? They're, they're actually designing um, things around a frame. And then a few of the philosophies came in, like they, they would not, um, they wouldn't bring in any plants that weren't native because that would extend the water coverage and the amount of water that would use. So so I began to see this this evolution. And, and most recently, I guess, six senses, um, uh, this evolution towards a, a, like, like 
like a sustainable approach and a, um, a celebration yeah. of, of the actual location. So yeah, that, and that, that seems to be the, the, the new definition of, of what luxury means. Um, and, and absolutely. I think so. Uh, uh Alila is a very good sample of to be an icon for Uluwatu. Mm -hmm. You know, if I say Alila Uluwatu, everybody knows exactly this, you know, this cabana, this wooden cabana, yeah. what overlooks the sea. It's in all the minds from all the people. So it's something that is really well established. And like I say, a very heavy background also on sustainability, what they bring in already here. Mm -hmm. we, we, with Six Senses, we bring it on the next level. So I was not only GM, a general manager from Six Senses, I was also a farmer, you know. Uh, I had, uh, I bought two goats. <laughs> uh, we had around 30 chicken and, and we have our organic garden behind our hotel. So we produce all our vegetables and our herbs by ourselves. We have a mushroom hub. They're so big, like my kitchen here, uh -huh. but produce our own mushrooms. What we uh, produce every year, over 100 kilo mushrooms. Oh, wow. So we take the milk from our, from our goats and make our goat cheese. We what? take the chicken and invite our our guests to, to go to the chicken and get the eggs in the morning who have their dishes done in the morning. So for the kids, this is an absolutely amazing experience to go in the chicken hut, you know, and pick the eggs from the, from the basket with the basket from the room and go back to the kitchen to the chef and the chef make the omelette for them. I so see. they see where the carrot comes from. They see where the potato comes from. And we have all the herbs and the flowers in, in the garden what are eatable. So. I'm much more than only a person who is for room, food, and beverage, and sales marketing. In, in charge is also the back of house. What we give the guests again, like I say, we make a step back and, and invite the guests to come to the nature to see. It's easy to to plant vegetable, uh, to have their own chicken, and 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 embrace again the product from from Bali. You know, we right. we are not having an Evian or San Pellegrino in our hotel. Right. We don't import anything overseas, so it's it's really really strict, and we don't have any one-way plastic anymore. So we don't have any cellophane paper in the kitchen, right. no vacuum bags in the kitchen. So right. this is all gone. So we are really pushing, pushing on on an edge to be in 2023, not 2022, plastic free. So right. all six census groups will be plastic free in 2022. So that's an amazing step what we are doing to help the environment and really not to, we, we don't allow our suppliers to come in to bring, you know, the coconuts that are always wickled in, in, in cellophane. They cannot provide anything like this. They need to bring everything in our boxes, what we give to them, and they bring the food to us. We make it empty and move it back. So we don't have any garbage. Okay. They have no packaging cost. Right. So there's a lot of change of the, uh, for the, from the experience from the, from the uh, supplier to change their habits, how they can supply our food to us. Right. And in the start, it was very difficult. Now they say, oh my God, I have much less cost with you. you know? I don't need to pack. So I give it only to you. I put it in your box and bring it to you. So Perfect. fantastic. You know? So they are very happy. <laughs> I, I I actually think this is a this is kind of a, a growing trend now that I've seen. I remember in the old days the kitchen area was a hidden area in a hotel, and I think starting in the '90s that became more of an open area for people to to witness. Okay, you know this is the artistry of the yeah. back of house, and now the back of house goes all the way to the source. Right? It's it's it's. <laughs> it's it, I feel like the back of house is now the front of house. It's almost like. Like the, the magic yeah. happens when you can open up the hood and see what, what is actually the, the, the provenance of, of all the things that you're consuming here. And, and you, you, can, you can trace that journey back to the, the, the original source. Um, okay, wow, that's, that's yeah. a, when I, when I was When I studied chef, mm -hmm. uh, the reputation of the chefs in Switzerland was not very good. Yeah. <laughs> Look today, chefs are superstars. Yeah. <laughs> They're superstars. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's amazing, you know. You're in a really... today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, I'm happy for that. I'm really happy. Then, you know, in the kitchen, it's a hard job, you know. You, you work mostly then when other people have stay off. Of course. You, uh, times are mostly long, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a hot and hot uh, environment, you know. In the kitchen, it's hot. You sweat, you know. And it's a tough job, but it's a fun job. It's a very creative job. I really love to be chef. So, uh, 
I, I still go into the market and buy my fish for myself and, 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 and cook it here at home. So that's it. That's a must for me. So that's, uh, that's something very important. And that, that, that the chef is now more in front by the guests mm -hmm. and talk to the guests and, and make the recommendation. Yes. What kind of fish we get today? What kind of vegetable we just uh, get from the farm? That's what the guests think is luxury today. It's not anymore the money with 30 pages, but you don't know what is fresh and what not. Correct. So it's a small assortment, but it's directly from the garden. So really a, a farm to table concept. Excellent. Excellent. Mm. Speaking of, of, okay, so these are the products that you're, you're sort of moving into the hotel. These are the things that are, um, you know, like the, the tradables. Um, the other component I think of, of great hospitality is of course the service, right? How do you, how do you experience um, the service? How do you experience the, the, the engagement with, with your staff, with your teams? And this opens up my question of like, what is your philosophy? So just earlier we talked about like your own journey of how you became a general manager through mentorship and coaching. Um, but broadly speaking, like how do you see, like what is the, how do you, I mean, you have, you have, you have these very high standards. You have this, 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 uh, this lofty vision here, right? Um, and you're looking at people with maybe, you know, this is the first time they're hearing such a thing before, right? So how do you, like, how do you, how do you bring this through? How do you get people to be around this vision? And how do you, how do you promote and, and, and get it so that, so that this vision becomes a bit more real every day? Yeah, I think so. It's it's what we are providing in, in Six Sense and other properties I was working also is if you are young, if you are 15 to 20 years old, you don't know exactly what you really like. You know, <laughs> the best way is to go in and, and try out, you know, and yeah. try out. And that's exactly what makes you more certain. OK, I'm, I'm the number guy. I like finance. You know, I like to be there in the office. Uh, or I'm a, an outgoing person. I, I like people, you know, I like to be in connection with people. So it can be F and B, it can be front office. So we are trying to, for, for young people, to give them the chance to hop around in, in the different department. Uh -huh. And then in the end, we talk to them, said, so which one, which one do you really like? You know, where you have the biggest fun. And of course, the department head is a big, important uh, experience factor, mm -hmm. but also from the work, you know, what, what they can learn, how they can grow. Uh, it's, it's, it's very important to find out and not put someone in the housekeeping and, and he would like to be a chef, you know. So it's really to listen to the young people and, and find out with them together. Again, like you say, with coaching, with, with talks, with, uh, with, with get them in the office and, and see what they, what they like and don't like. And then start to build them up from the bottom up. Mm, interesting. And do you see, uh, actually, this is, this is an interesting question I've had because we, we, we run a startup here and startups are sort of, you know, like in, in, in the context of being here in Indonesia, they're, they're sort of probably as new as sustainability, you know, sustainability maybe had, had a head start. So do you find that, let's say in, in the cases uh, like, like, I guess in your own interview process, right? Uh, 10 interviews, do you find that it, it's, it, it's, how would I say? Is it easier to work with people who just have, like you said, young people who have no idea of what they like yet and, and just say, okay, here it is. This is what we're trying to do, build this vision. Or do you find cases where you, you need to rely on people with more experience, but maybe this experience is not entirely transferable to the new philosophy that you're building around what, what your, your brand represents, what your hotel represents. Do you have any, any feedback or any wisdom about that? I think so. Like I say, uh, I'm uh, at the sample. Uh, six senses have 316 employees. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for me to have the contact to all the 360 employees. They can come to me anytime. My, I don't have an office door or an office. Mm -hmm. I'm an open table, so everybody walks past my table uh, like uh, a normal employee. You know, so mm -hmm. there is no barrier to go and knock on a door and say, "Can I come in?" No, nothing. So they can come anytime if I'm there. They are happy to talk to me. However, for me, it's very important to have the right partner. The leader must understand what we would like to follow with our young people. So the senior people in each department head, what I am in, in daily contact and, and, and brief them daily 
they brief me daily what's happening in the property. There, I have the key person what will talk then to the to the employees now. Mm. So it's it's uh, the ex com team or department head, you can say. They are the most important people for me. Mm-hmm. That they understand me, what I like to bring over, how we can develop young people. Mm. So there is, there is, there is a, a key person. What I'm daily discuss what what's going on and how we are how we are moving forward. How is the training? We have a training manager. What is very strongly involved, and and also that we have uh, all the, the the direction from six senses uh, always on the same page. And the head office has clear. Uh, ideas how we are talking to our employees, how we are developing our employees, mm-hmm. and how we are motivating our employees. So that's that's a, a a full picture on the backbone what we are then implementing with the department head, what the employee can see, and then the echo comes back by the uh, by the town hall what we are doing regularly and what the, every employee can talk to me. Of course, and say I have a question. Right. What's going on? When we get better salary, <laughs> all this comes out, and I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a person to to be, you know, that they are shocked when I around, I walk around. No, they, I'm, I'm the GM, and I help where, where it needs to be helped. No? So it's something what is not, uh, they are not shocked to see. You know? it's, it's something what it's, they embrace when I'm around. You know? so they have, a, they are open with questions, and I answer them so good as possible. Absolutely. I'm, I'm curious if, if, let's say, in your experience um, as a general manager, you're, you're bringing in your department heads who are ultimately, like in your own words, these are the most important people that transmit the, the vision through. Do you ever find that it, like a conflict like or just these uh, they have leadership experience, but they might not have, let's say, the same um, philosophy <laughs> Uh, towards towards the approach mm. of, of sustainability, or they might not see any sin in, let's say, using plastic from time to time. So then, so then, it, it, I've always found like there there becomes this moment, right? It's almost like a confrontational moment where it's like, is this yeah. person here? Are they hired here to? Are you hiring them so that they can share their philosophy? Are they here to follow your philosophy and? And amplify your philosophy to their their particular um, departments, right? And mm-hmm. where I see that that's a delicate balance is because sometimes it's both, right? Sometimes you you're hiring a person because yep. you know they're competent and they know what to get done, um, but then the the vision part is is the part that you know I, I, I sometimes as a leader I feel like okay uh, should this person be allowed to carry their own vision for how they see that this should be done or mm. do they need to follow my vision um, or do they need to follow the company's yeah. vision on that one. So mm. those are kind of delicate, I feel like, because it's it's a it's a matter of yeah. delegation, right? Uh, what can be delegated but what cannot be so delegated. I ask you, uh-huh. how are you expecting to work in a, in a shop that you have everything written down in SOPs? Mm-hmm. Or you have some freedom, or you can do what you ha- know how to do. So it's it's like you say, it's mm-hmm. everybody bring his own package, you know. Sure. So what we what we trying in six senses is that we have some we have SOPs right, written down how we are welcome our guests, how we what our chain, what is our guest experience make, what he has to do with the guests over the time they are staying with us. We have this all written down, but we don't write down how we have to welcome our guests. Mm. So we give a, a part of a freedom how to interact with guests. So it's not so that everything is written down in a book, what they have to say and have to walk. And that's not what we are. Uh, we are, we like to be very relaxed, but still on a good distance to our guests that they feel it's a great service. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's something outstanding what I, what I have in, in this hotel. So it's a, it's a it's a balance. If someone I say now, someone comes from a from another hotel group, I don't say a name, uh, but was working twenty years for this hotel group, and sure. he will come and work for Six Senses. He need to learn to let go. Mm. He need to learn to let go. Then a lot of other hotel management groups, they are writing down until how you say hello and goodbye to the guest. <laughs> On the phone, uh, on the reception, everything is written down, and right. that's 
of course, you have to stand it. it it's, it's, everybody say the same, you know? Yeah. But there is no human touch anymore. There is none. <laughs> There's no feeling. There's no, you don't see someone uh, different way smiling. Then everybody has to smile, smile the same way, you know? And that's not, that's not what we are. We give the employees or our host, what we say, is it all hosts, uh, what's handling our guests. So the host, they have a lot of freedom how to engage with the guests. And every single guest like to have a bit of closer connection or a bit more distance. And they have to find out how far the guest would like to go. And if the balance is the perfect balance, the guests have the best experience ever. So there we need to have exactly the, the, the knowledge and the experience to, to handle our guests in a way what everybody say, oh my God, Fuck Buddy was the best jam I ever had. He was always here, but he was not, not too much, you know. So it's exactly the point where we are not writing down how to handle it. We have standards, the, the, the basic, but there on top, how you go and make the extra smile that is not written down. Every employee can do it by themselves, but we recognize it. If some of the employees are extremely good and we have a lot of feedback from our guests mm -hmm. in TripAdvisor or comments, then we are really take these comments and they will be promoted and they get also some awards uh, internally. Mm -hmm. They be mentioned mostly that they make a great job and everybody's looking what she's special doing, you know, and our employees learn them from employees how is the best, best practice. Understood. So there is a, a, an easy way how we can get uh, employees on a, on a wave of success and, and, and be happy and have fun by work. What is extremely important, you know, if it's, it's, it's not something what has to be, what you can write down every single step. So it has to be a, 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 a freedom for the employee to react and make decisions. Also, what uh, perhaps sometimes good, sometimes bad, but they can learn from the mistakes. You know, it's not something what we we we, we, we really we promote all hosts to make mistakes. You know, <laughs> a lot of hosts that come to us, they are scared and say, oh, if I make a mistake, I get fired. No, opposite, opposite. Uh, someone who make a mistake is uh, make the first step to learn something, that's and that's our motivation, how we tell them. That's, that's actually remarkable because uh, that, that kind of reminds me of a few of our, our core values here at Bukadista too as well. Um, in order, I think, for hospitality to be well delivered, um, you have to trust people. Um, and you have to trust people to be the hero, that they will come yeah. up with their own um, solution to, to the problem, even if it's the first time they're dealing with that. And, and your second principle, we, we, we have a term for it here, we call it fail fast. So if you don't fail, yep. it probably means that you're really not trying. You're you're kind of like just keeping everything. <laughs> you know, I'm safe. Uh, yeah, let's just you know like buy and, and move on, and and that then um, doesn't doesn't actually inspire anybody. Actually, uh, it just feels like yeah, well, the food is safe, the service is safe, but not 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 transformational. Um, okay, uh, let me hop over really quick. Think, to, they, oh, oh, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Michael. Yeah. I, I, the point is not only the, the host what have then not the possibility to, to grow, it's also the guest experience. Mm -hmm. the end of the day, the guest decides if he comes back or not. Right. And if we have guests, they say, oh, it's absolutely amazing, then they will come back. And this, this, the key person is the host, but it's directly by the guest. And it's not me, it's the host. And if we are as leaders make a good job, they will talk about us. For sure. Only then. For sure. And so is, is it, well, actually, let me let me kind of pivot over to Andre uh, for for follow up question. Uh, Andre, you had a question about about how like a general manager engages with the rest of the team. I'll I'll let Andre pick up on that. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to come back with the earlier topic that you said, sir, that, that uh, you are trying to resign in, in in your past company, and then your 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 boss or your seniors trying to hold you there and. You know, I was I was trying to ask you what what do you think is his secret uh, strategy <laughs> to keep you even though you have to work in you know uncertain this maybe something that not really easy to start like that. So what, what do you think is secret strategy to keep you motivated there? I think it was both sides. You know, at first I like to learn more. That was my motivation to grow and go in a different position and learn more. And he know it. He knows that I would like to move on and, and see a different department and understood if I don't get it, I will leave. 
So he was very happy with me and say, okay, Michael, uh, okay, you have done three years, great job. We have already your successor on board, so we know who will replace you, but I bring you now on the next level of department and you will show me what you can do there. And you need to change me this, 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 this. So he put me on a spot what I could really immediately connect and you know, how long will you stay in a hotel, how more confident you are, you know? Also when I was purchasing my nature, I was, having my wine tasting with our guests. So I was already in touch with them. So I already get in front of, again, a front of, of guests. And that is easier to make the step to us be F and B, you know? So it's, it's really both sides would understand how much you can push someone or not. Look, I have employees in our, in our hotel, uh, fantastic employees, you know, they, they are speaking perfectly English. They are good looking, they are friendly, they are outgoing. And they are in a position where I think, oh my God, he should be now in front of us. You know, he should move on, but he don't like, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if someone don't like to move on and make a career, you have to accept it. You know, don't push someone who don't like. You know, mm -hmm. but if you have someone who like to make the step, you are the hero for him. You know, you are the hero to push him on this possession. You know, so uh, and it, it's exactly it's again. You need to know your employees very well, and then you can put them really slowly, slowly in the right position, and they are yeah the whole life uh, they will think on you. you know? huh? Yeah, yeah, I see. I, I, uh, here in leadership, uh, we also learn about. I believe it's related to zone proximal development. You know, when the leader is able to to push your the the member itself, you know, I think that like you said, it's in the both side. And if the leader thinks you can move forward and do something else, I think that's that's the way how can actually the leader see yourself on your you have this kind of uh order that you can actually go there, but you need another development, you need another, you know, uh, you need to learn first. And I think that's that's the beautiful part of it. Thanks, Mr. Michael. And you and you know Andre, what is what I learned in my past experience that very often you know, you, you, you have employees, they are extremely good or they are mid, mid, mid range or they are a bit weak. And you know, only an employee, I would say around 30% really when you work with him and 70% you don't know. 70% is your family, it's your private life. You don't know about that. But if you knock on this door and say, hey, how is your family? Is everything okay at all? If you ask them, they will tell you, and then automatically you get trust. You know, I share from my family, and he uh, share from his family, and automatically you know a person more, and then you can also give the right direction to the to this person where they should go. That's the correct. And how better you know someone, you know what they need and what they are able to do. So that's that's the key. What I am looking in, I don't look only on on the experience what they have in the CV. That can be a CV can look very good but they are not able to talk to me <laughs> so for me it's important that i see every single employee what is hired i would like to see in what position they are if they are able to do it or not so it's very quickly it's done and i need two three minutes talking to them and i know <laughs> so that's something what i uh, really it's it's and that's not good or bad uh, it's only different people no different people they are different strength and the weakness and then we all have that you know and that's okay and if someone say oh look i would like to be a front office, front office manager one day uh, and i start now as clerk or as a back of house in the front office uh, but he has the mentality to be that and have really motivation to go there then i help him then i help him but if someone is not moving at all say um, I'm, I'm i'm okay with driver so okay then you are good you know so i will not push you to to make the step up in a different direction Oops. so it's how better you know your your own host or employees uh you better you better you make the right decision for them that's actually really wise mr michael uh i think we we as andre was just saying earlier about this idea of zone of proximal development we've been we've been um it's it's a theory that like there is there's things that you can do well with no guidance. There's some things that you can do well with guidance. And then there's things you can't even do with, with, with guidance, um, you know, even if you do get guidance. So I've, I, what, what you told me in, in the resignation story of how your mentor challenged you kind of 
it triggered a a I kind of had like a moment here where I was like bing and I remember this this old saying that you know the the teacher appears when the student is ready and I think yep. what I'm interpreting is that now after having this conversation with you is that the student is ready when they're ready to move on right and as a teacher you have to instead of seeing that as you know as oh that's terrible I'm losing a student what that should actually trigger is the students ready for the next lesson and they're ready for the next understanding um and uh and i remember seeing this cuz i i think uh, Andre, we were watching the karate kid the other day because we said this is a really good example of <laughs> right and, and i remember karate kid is i'm 30 years old <laughs> Very beginning, the the brings brings the the student through, and and they just make them do simple things like wash dishes, right? Just do this, mm. just do this the whole time, and then <laughs> they, they they he the master pushed the student to do it, to do it, to do it until they wanted to quit, and then they told them yeah. what this was for, and you're ready. <laughs> you're ready for it. And I, I, I'm trying to learn that now in the hotel industry because I see in the hotel industry mm -hmm. what happens a lot. Like we, I, Andre, we here always start with theory first, right? We tell everybody this is the theory, this is why, this is the strategy, this is whatever, and then uh, what we notice is that it confuses people, right? <laughs> They're like, "What? I, I don't know yeah. how to connect my skill set with that with that theory." But but what I've noticed in hospitality, there is no theory. It's just like. You know, you wash the dishes and you get them to this level and then that's it. And when you want to quit and I see that you're doing well, okay, that means you probably are ready for more challenges, right? They'll say, okay, have you ever yeah, thought yeah, of yeah. doing this, right? And and is, is, that, is that the secret then to interpret, like, let's say, a resignation as not like I quit, but as more like as, as a mentor to interpret that as I'm ready for more, right? I'm, I'm, I'm ready to yep. level up to the next level. Okay. Okay. That's that's actually pretty. I, I think it's 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 <laughs> yes, it's quite a, a great experience. You know and what you just say. You know it's it's exactly there. What you you have to do many things for many 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 years. You know until you are there in the right moment. But someone comes to you and say, it's now you are ready to move on. You know you you have done a great job, and you can do for sure much better in next year. But I take you now when you are on the top. To give you something else, oh. not that you get bored with this, what you are doing, you know. Right. So it's, it's something that really motivates your employee again to to learn all the time something more, all the time. It's it's we are never old enough to learn something new. Absolutely. Like me, I just have done my pet in my diving last week, you know. So it's never too late, you know. You should always push you and learn something more and do something more. It's never end. It's never end. Okay. If you stop stop to learn, you die. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, there there won't be anything else. Then, this has been very fascinating, uh, Mr. Michael. I'll go over to Gabby real quick. Gabby's uh, uh, not not in great health, yeah. right now, but uh, Gabby, um, do you have any questions for Mr. Michael at the moment? Hi. Um, thank you for all your share uh, for all your stories. It's actually very fascinating. I think I don't have much questions, but um, can you give like some kind of um, when I feel like I am facing a stumbling block, stumbling block, do you have like your own opinion of how do I face it, especially when dealing with uh, people around you, like guests or pe um, or partners or even colleagues? When you feel like oh, um, it's really hard to handle them. Do you have any <laughs> suggestions or any? <laughs> yes, I think as an intern, that's uh. I'm still very new to this, so I think hearing from you will be very great to help me grow. <laughs> I understand you. your point. It's look, that's something what if you are starting your career or you're on the or end of the career, it's always something what you need to handle a bit differently. But the the best uh, recommendation that I can give you, uh, copy, right? Yes, copy. Copy is. Your name. Uh, if you will have all these people around you what know perhaps better you something and it's always good to listen to that and take to you write it down 
before you answering or or, or give another and uh, another comment to them, only absorb it, uh, take it to you, and think about. Uh, and if you don't understand everything, ask again. Ask how you mean that exactly. I'm not sure <laughs> if I understood it right. Then very often when someone tell you something it comes to you in a totally different way uh, and perhaps you are emotional or stressed or you are very relaxed and you get the message in a different way than what the sender would like to send to you and that's something mm -hmm. what's very often emotional expression you know you feel not comfortable or you think why did he say that to me and and, and, and perhaps it's only to for you to listen to it and, and if you understand it well then only don't answer or don't don't go in a, in a communication what will end in a bad way there are always people they are knowing everything and the best way is to write it down you know and then reconfirm to the person look you say this and this and this and, and i'm happy to do this and this and this and this so it's, it's good to have it in the written so not someone say oh don't say this to you that's not true so it's always good to write things down and reconfirm, you know, if it's a very challenging person, I always do that and say, is, is it okay for you? I write this down so we are, we can have records on that, you know, not that we are missing out something or I misunderstand something, so that we have always the right records so we can uh, go back and say, okay, uh, we are still on the same page. It's very important by challenging people. Very, oh, I don't know, are you a little bit emotional? Or more um, the, the more like how you uh, feel. not about emotional, but it uh, it creates self doubt and self doubt. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. That's good. You know? <laughs> no problem with that. No problem with that. And I, I I have this, you know, not anymore so much like when I was young. But <laughs> when I was young, of course, you know, I said, oh my god, I do something wrong, you know, or I, I could do better, you know. But that's okay, you know, that's a learning process, what you go through, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's only, let it happen. Don't be scared about that. Uh, it's something mm -hmm. that brings you to the next level. And like I say, it's, if you can have a stress situation and you can absorb it without to take it personal, then only on this, what, what is the issue, what we are talking about, then you can separate it and you will see it's much easier to handle difficult person. Then they coming from another from another corner what you don't understand and they live perhaps in a very dark world and but you need to get out, filter out all the emotion and personal stuff and take only the, the really the facts out, what you really need to know and, and work with. And all other things you let it on the side. Don't take don't get it to you, you know, and say, Oh, he say to me I'm not good enough. <laughs> I'm not good enough then I, I I don't know, I had not the right tools to work, or I, I don't understand what, what I should do. I don't uh, have not the clear the guidelines. So there are many factors what comes in. And, and Gabi, I know sometimes very frustrating, you know, if you have people around you, they know everything better than that. I know something, you know, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, exactly in this position you are, listen, write down, learn so much as possible. Mm -hmm. And you will see also many things they are not so good, that they say is the best thing to do. And then you write it down. Oh, I will never do that. I will never talk to my employee like this, 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 this. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Michael, for, for the questions and the answer. And um, it, it's about time now. We've we've gone over, but uh, I really want to say uh, my heart no thanks uh, for sharing this hour with us and, and bringing us through the very fascinating journey that you've been through um, and, and the philosophy around six senses and also your, your personal um, leadership philosophy too as well. And, and this, this is, uh, this is exactly what we wanted to do to celebrate the, the, the behaviors, the, 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 the tendencies and the attributes that, that make, um, you know, make good professional development. So, so thank, thank you so much for, for gracing us with those, uh, uh, this time and and your wisdom mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah from this point on one more thing one more thing oh yes yes sir one more thing Jim. yeah please Andrew and Kapi always okay. try to go to your boss if you like to learn something more come <laughs> out from yourself tell them that I like to know more about finance I like to know more about housekeeping push them 
Hey, I would like to see. Mm. Can I uh, work there for uh, two a weeks in a finance? Can I work two weeks in, in in housekeeping? Can I work? You have to push them. You know, everybody will say yes. Also, if I will be the chair, <laughs> there are some others. That, oh, no, yes, no, no, but that's yes, okay. You no, know? but you should try. You should try. There's really a, a, a big opportunity. People they ask, they will get. Well, that's people they don't ask. They will lose, you know. That's that's why we have this, right? That's why we have this so that people can have to to also learn not just from me, but also from people who who uh, who do it better than me too as well. But um, but yeah, yeah. I, that's good advice, um, Andre Gabby. I think I think Mr. Michael gave excellent advice. Push me to help you learn. Um, I at the end of the day, yep. and uh, that's it's our mission, right? I live to. Inspire delight by watching people transform. So, so the more more, more transformation, the yeah, happier, absolutely. the happier, uh, the happier we all are. Okay, uh, Mr. Michael, thank you so much again. Okay, and I know I'm going to run into you. No problem. Uh, for sooner or later, um, <laughs> and and we'll we'll, we'll probably uh, we'll probably hang out. But um, yeah, if if you're around, I'll, I'll I'll get your WhatsApp, and maybe we can hang out and get a coffee or, or dinner or something one of these sure. uh, one of these days. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll all be right. great. Thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Michael, we'll, we'll take a screenshot with everyone together, and this we'll post on our LinkedIn to say thank you, yeah? Okay, so big, big. Uh, okay. One, two, three. All right. Perfect. Done. All right. Thank you very much. And, good, 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 good. Uh, have a great evening. No problem. Have a nice evening. You too. Bye-bye. All, Bye -bye. All, All right. the best. Bye-bye. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow.